welcome to a brand new episode of Health Mantra, where we dive into important health issues with leading medical experts. My name is Heather, and with me today are two esteemed professionals, both from Manipal Hospitals, Goa. Today I have Dr. Sri Ram, an associate consultant in medical gastroenterology. Hello, doctor. Thank you so much Yum. for joining us here today. I also have Dr. Sridharan M, a consultant in surgical oncology at Manipal Hospital, Goa. Hello, doctor. Thank you for joining us on the show. Today, our focus is on stomach cancer, an affliction that affects many, as many as 60,000 new cases are detected in India alone each year. Now, we will be talking more about this and how we can take care of our gut health. But first, let's go say hello and ask the most important question, which is how does stomach cancer develop? So basically, the stomach is the most important organ in our body. It's a part of elementary tract, which connects uh, from esophagus to small intestine. We can see this uh, NCRP data, which was released uh, five years back. As you said earlier, uh, it's the fifth most cancer among men and sixth most common cancer among women. So generally, stomach cancer will develop over a period of course of time. Generally, it will start with a gastritis, then it takes into a form of ulcer, then finally it turns up into a cancer. So this is basically known as a chorea pathway. Okay. Uh, doctor, you said that, uh, you know, fifth most common in men and sixth most common in women. So there is a gender prevalence. Uh, is there also an age or, you know, it has, it, has it got to do with population? Is there a prevalence? So, in general, if you'll take the statistics, most of the stomach cancers uh, are after an age of uh, 50 years. In women, it is uh, after an age of 60 years. If any person getting less than 40 years, uh, we have to suspect uh, some family genes. So some cancers are running in the family. Uh, Dr. Sridharan, I believe, uh, you know, uh, as Dr. Sriram said, you suspect genes. So genetics does play a role. So what are you trying to say that if somebody like a parent has cancer in the family, is there a higher risk for a child to get the same cancer? Yes. So when we look at stomach cancer, when we look at the patients who present with stomach cancer, most of them do not have a significant family history meaning like many of them do not have family members who were affected by uh, stomach cancer. So when do we suspect that a person might be harboring genetics which he can pass to his children? So the first one, there are like certain uh, indicators which show that the patient might be harboring those genes. The first and foremost thing is, as Dr. Shiram told, if the patient is presenting to uh, at a younger age group, age less than 40 years of age, and especially if it is a type of cancer, a diffuse type of stomach cancer, then we suspect that patient might be harboring that genetic mutation. The other indicators could be if there are like two or more close blood relatives who have a history of gastric cancer, then you have to subject that patient for genetic testing. So overall, when we see only about 10 percentage of the gastric cancer run in families, rest 90 percentage of the stomach cancer is caused by mutations which are sporadic, which means they are not inherited by their uh, children. So they don't, uh, most of the patients do not have to worry about the uh, uh, inherited uh, cancers. Cancers. So when you say that uh, you don't have to worry about inherited and uh, so are you talking about lifestyle factors? Is it stress? Is it the food that we eat? So when we look at the uh, risk factors for uh, stomach cancer, there are like lots of modifiable risk factors and there are lots of non-modifiable risk factors. The non-modifiable risk factors include increasing in age. The modifiable risk factors include a sedentary lifestyle or smoking or excessive drinking or having excess of like salted and smoked food like uh, uh, a bar a, a barbecue and all. Then like the patient has a uh, increased tendency to develop stomach cancer. But having said that, are those things like 100% going to cause cancer? No, they are not. 
there are like lots of people who have this uh, li lifestyle and still like have a uh, lead a uh, uh, lead a uh, life without stomach cancer but it is advisable to prevent these things to avoid uh, stomach cancer basically they just risk factors they do not know factors. that it will it will develop into a cancer it's not a certainty it's a possibility okay doctor now you spoken about salt uh, you said smoked foods uh, does spice also play a role Yes, the, there is uh, the, some evidence, there is some ambiguous evidence suggesting that increased spice intake can, could be a risk factor for gastric asthma. Uh, on the other hand, if you see, there are like lots of protective factors uh, also, such as like increased intake of fruits, vegetables, especially like fruits which are rich in vitamin C. These can reduce the risk of developing a stomach cancer. Okay. Uh, doctor, let's talk about a bit about detection. Now, you said that if two close relatives have, uh, have, you know, are suffering from stomach cancer, that there is a higher chance of, of you know, you, you getting it. So, you said that we need to do gene testing. Do we have that here in Goa? So, at present, we are outsourcing. There is no uh, indigenous company in Goa which is doing that genetic testing. At present, we are uh, outsourcing those genetic testing either to Mumbai or Pune. And we, uh, in fact, we do get those uh, results back in quick time. So that genetic mutation is called the CDH1 genetic mutation. So whenever there is a clinical indicator that the patient could be harboring a familial uh, genetic mutation that the patient can uh, tra uh, transmit to their uh, ch children, we do that genetic testing, not in all patients. Now, besides your gene testing, there is no other routine screening as such. Uh, Stomach cancer, the incidence as we already discussed, it is the fifth most common cancer overall. So we do not have a screening program. So when we look at uh, countries like Japan, the stomach cancer is one of the most common cancers. It affects like one in like 20 per people. Wow. So there, the there is a screening program. Okay. So the screening program as such, we don't have a screening program because it won't yield that much patients, the screening program. Dr. Sridham, would you like to tell us you, uh, there are obvious signs and there are subtle signs? So the bad thing is uh, patients who are coming with stomach cancer uh, are generally at the end stage. Initially, they can present with vague abdominal symptoms uh, like upper abdominal pain and uh, severe pain. Yes, at times it is mild intensity. And later on, it can occur as a severe pain. And patient can present with uh, severe weight loss and a lump in the stomach. And other al alarms are includes like jaundice and um, blood in stools. These are some of the uh, symptoms uh, where the patient is presenting. Okay, these are the very obvious uh, signs. Are there also any subtle signs that we need to be looking out for? So indigestion and bloating symptoms, and these are like mild symptoms. Patients should uh, meet their gastroenterologist uh, when patients are experiencing these kind of symptoms. Okay. Um, so now you're saying that, you know, patients should go and meet a gastroenterologist. So what are the tests and investigations that, you, you know, you would do? if somebody presents with such such kind of symptoms? So the basic and most important test is endoscopy. It's a small uh, flexible tube where a camera is attached at, uh, at the end of the tube. We'll pass through the mouth and we'll take some bits of uh, uh, pieces from the tissue and we'll send for histopathological examination. We'll get the results uh, within like two to three days. Okay. And after that, uh, we'll subject the patient to radiological investigations, which includes uh, a CECT scan and a PET CT whole body. And if necessary, over a period of time, uh, then uh, we can su even subject the patient to diagnostic laparoscopy if biopsy turned out to be negative on endoscopy. Okay, so if it's negative on endoscopy, then you do a bioscope. Uh, bi Through a diagnostic laparoscopy, we can go ahead. Uh, for uh, the tissue sample. Now, doctor, you said that 75% of patients uh, turn up in the one of the last stages. How important is early detection? Yeah, it's very important because uh, if you see the cure rates, uh, it's like uh, almost like 80% can be cured when the patient present with us uh, during early stages. So that is very much important. Could you explain the different stages, what they mean for the patient? Okay. So based so basically, it includes like four stages, stage one, two, and three, four. And uh, other uh, staging classification is TNM classification is there. 
So basically, if the tumor is confined to a particular like mucosa level or submucosa level, it is stage one. If it is confined to uh, like nearby organs, it is stage two. Both of these are curable. Yeah, but stage one is uh, definitely curable. And the stage two, stage three, and stage four uh, depends upon the extent of the tumor. Okay. So stage uh, three, lymph node involvement will be there, and uh, stage uh, four is a. Uh, it's like uh, spread to extensively to the other parts of the body. Uh, doctor, moving on to treatment options. Uh, you know there is surgery, of course, and then there is chemotherapy. How do you decide between surgical and non-surgical, or is it a combination of both? Yes. So when we look at the treatment options, we have several treatment options available. As you said, there is surgery. So like then there is chemotherapy and then there is radiation. And the fourth and the recent one is targeted therapy. Okay. So in the early stages, as Dr. Sriram told, like stage one and stage two are early stage uh, uh, cancers, where a definitive cure can be achieved in over 80% of the people. So in stage one and two, the usual uh, approach is to start uh, to do the surgery first, where the uh, the portion of the stomach which is involved by the stomach, either the part of the stomach or the complete stomach is removed and the e esophagus or the foot pipe or the remaining stomach is joined with the uh, intestine. So this is the uh, surgical aspect. So after that, the specimen that is removed, the tumor that is removed, it is sent for testing. testing. So then we get what is known as the pathological staging which is more accurate than the clinical staging which is depending upon the CT scan or the PET scan. So once that pathological staging is available, for some patients we can avoid the chemotherapy and for other patients, especially for whom lymph nodes uh, involvement were there, so they will need chemotherapy. So in stage 3 and stage, uh, in stage 3 which is locally advanced, it is a combined modality treatment, meaning like we start the patient on chemotherapy. So once the patient receives three or four cycles of chemotherapy usually, the tumor will start shrinking. Then a scan is again done to see whether the patient uh, is uh, operable or not. So once the operability is assessed after the chemotherapy, then the patient undergoes the same surgery which I explained before. So after that, the specimen is again sent for testing and depending upon the report, the patient will receive further chemotherapy if needed. In stage four, stage four which means the tumor has spread to other parts of the body the treatment cure is usually not possible. So in that stage, we, what we, our aim of treatment is to increase the lifespan of the patient and increase the meaningful lifespan of the person. So that will be the uh, aim of the treatment. So the main treatment option at that stage is either chemotherapy or targeted th uh, therapy. So when does radiation come into play? Whenever the patient develops a severe bleeding symptoms. So then a as a palliation, radiation comes into play. So as an additional treatment, when do you uh, uh, give, give radiation? So after chemotherapy, after surgery, if the tumor is not completely removed, then we can give additional radiation also. So these are the treatment options that are available for stomach cancer. Doctor, now uh, apart from all of these treatment options, you said something about palliative care. And uh, we know how important it is in any form of, uh, you know, whether uh, any form of cancer uh, tr uh, care. Could you tell us, uh, regardless of the prognosis, can you tell us uh, what are your thoughts on palliative care and how, you know, how, how can we help the patient? So palliation is one of the most important, but sadly one of the most neglected part of the cancer treatment. So what we mean when we say palliation, is that like you do not we do not give any treatment to the patient you tell like you, you take the patient home because we won't be able to do anything no it is not so we do the treatment which improves the quality of life of the patient that is called palliative treatment it can be with or without chemotherapy with chemotherapy if the patient has a meaningful improvement in lifespan then we do give chemotherapy if we feel despite chemotherapy her lifespan is not going to increase or the quality of life is not going to be great, we are going to treat the patient to give them medications which is going to improve their quality of life. Till they are alive, we are trying to uh, make them pain free and live, uh, uh, and, uh, live a dignified uh, uh, life. life. So whenever a cancer diagnosis comes, uh, 
this is usually a shock to not only to the patient but also to the family members also so a psychological counseling to the uh, patient is also a part of the uh, uh, palliative tr treatment apart from that there comes physiotherapy to improve the quality uh, to improve the general condition of the patient so the uh, when we uh, uh, talk about that uh, uh, psychological counseling the psychological counseling has to be done not only for the patient but also for the family members to what to expect and what to uh, how to care about the patient um doctor uh, uh, dr sriram said that uh, 80% of cancers are curable uh, but only if they detected early so is there uh, anything that you would like to tell our viewers you know any uh, any any little tips or something that you know that would help them yes so the in the early stages the symptoms of gastric cancer is usually vague so the patient will feel a, as a sense of indigestion or a sense of gas catch that is the usual symptoms that each and every one of us in our day to day life like uh, uh, face if these symptoms are persistent it is important to consult a medical gastroenterologist to have a upper endoscopy done in endoscopy they see the inner lining of the stomach to see whether the ca cancer is whether the mucosa is normal or not or whether there is any problematic cancer present or not if the cancer is found at this stage it is usually curable so if once the stage increases once the stage increases then the symptoms becomes more profound the symptoms like a sense of obstruction a sense of early satiety is they have little amount of food and they immediately feel full okay. or even uh, later stages they will have uh, whatever they eat they keep on vo vomiting these are like later symptoms so whenever there are like persistent gas problems it is always advisable to have something called a uh, 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 opportunity screening you screen yourself whether to check for yourself whether you have a cancer or not okay so uh, i think the key take away here is that it is curable stomach cancer is curable yes so if the stomach cancer is detected in stage 1 and 2 it is almost 80% of the patients can survive for 5 year or more the definition of a cure once it becomes stage 3 the cure rate drops down to 40% so in stage 4 hardly 5% of people survive beyond 5 years doctor now you said that you know if you uh, feel uneasy or you experience any of these symptoms it is better to go and see a gastroenterologist who will first do an endoscopy dr sriram i believe uh, that is your area of expertise can you tell us about the role of endoscopy in uh, detect in detection and treatment of gut cancer yeah basically in uh, carcinoma stomach we'll do an endoscopy for a diagnostic purpose uh, and uh, during later stages we'll do it for a therapeutic purpose and palliative care is also there so initially for diagnosing uh, cancer uh, we'll take biopsy from the site of the cancer and uh, we'll send for uh, histopathological examinations and apart from that uh, when we detect like early gastric cancers we, when the cancer is uh, confined to the mucosa level then we'll go up, go ahead with the emr that is known as endoscopic mucosal resection and if the cancer is confined to mucosa and submucosa level then we'll do an end block resection which is known as uh, endoscopic submucosal dissection on later stages if the patient presented with an obstructive symptoms difficulty in passage of food into the small intestine then we'll place an enteral stent so that the patient get the relief of the obstructive symptoms okay um another question that i had was uh, dr sridharan you spoke a little bit about the cdh1 gene and uh, you know in case of say breast cancers we have uh, angelina jolie who was one of the most famous cases where she did an entire breast mastectomy now in in cases where you're saying that there is uh, chances of passing on the cdh1 gene mutation do we recommend prophylactic stomach removal what are the pro do the pros outweigh the cons do we do that here in india that's a good question so in cdh1 mutation the risk that the person will develop uh, a stomach cancer is almost like 80 to 90 percentage throughout their uh, in their uh, life span so in that case the most advisable treatment option the uh, treatment option that is generally advised is to have a prophylactic gastrectomy 
many like to remove the stomach in the entirety before the patients the youngest uh, uh, before the uh, youngest age patient that is diagnosed in the family so that is the usual treatment that is advisable so when we look at the cdh1 induced stomach cancer it is usually diffuse meaning like it does not happen at one side it can happen at multiple sites so the screening in the stomach in the stomach it can happen at multiple sites and it they can grow simultaneously also so a prophylactic gastrectomy in these patients is advisable this is before onset of stomach cancer yes before the onset of stomach cancer so when we look at the nutrition aspect whenever the a part of the or the complete portion of the stomach is uh, removed the patient will have some sort of nutritional deficiencies which need to be supplemented yeah, the first and foremost is the patient can develop anemia due to deficiency of iron the other one is uh, vitamin b12 deficiency so iron can be orally supplemented or preferably through injection vitamin b12 the patient has to take once in 3 months uh, uh, injection im injection or iv injection to replenish their vitamin b12 levels so apart from this they need to have some lifestyle modifications the main function of the stomach is to receive the food to store it and where the digestion starts since the stomach is not there these patients have to have a frequent small meals so instead of eating 3 times per day they have to eat 5 to 6 times per day and they cannot have more than uh, they cannot have more food at the same go so these are the lifestyle modifications once this once these modifications and the nutritional supplements are taken these patients usually can live a normal life uh, life uh so we spoken about uh, you know we've spoken about risk factors we've spoken about treatment options uh is there any advice that you would like to give our viewers on maintaining good gut health so uh, like in any other most of the cancers that happen in uh, 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 humans more uh, smoking is one of the most important risk factors so avoid tobacco at all cost so alcohol always drink in moderation if you are able to avoid well and good or if you have to have that's always have it in moderation fruits and vegetables these are the most important food that you can have in your day to day uh, uh, diet so as much the vegetables and fruit that you add in your food it is going to overall improve your health and it can also uh, help you from stomach cancer not only stomach cancer it also protects from colon and rectum rectal cancer dr sridham is there anything that you would like to add yeah i just want to add uh, something which is continuity with uh, dr sridharan better to take citrus fruits like lemon oranges and berries and apart from that uh, if the patient is crossing around like uh, 50 years of age uh, lot of antioxidant are, uh, and lot of antioxidants are available which includes uh, vitamin c patient can take vitamin c supplements also okay. for prevention of uh, this gastric cancer talking about supplements uh, yeah supplements okay so vitamin c uh, can help reduce the risk as it is an antioxidant it definitely reduces the risk of uh, gastric cancer Thank you Dr Sri Ram Dr Sridharan for joining us here today thank, thank you. you and thank you to our viewers for joining in we hope you found today's session both enlightening and informative yes our health does matter uh, Dr Sri Ram and Dr Sridharan are both available at Manipal Hospitals Goa Monday to Saturday 10 a.m to 4 p.m this is Heather saying goodbye for now until the next one take care stay healthy stay safe and keep watching prudent media